Now, my special guest on today's show is a former area manager of Pizza Hut who used to take baths with his dad in a tin in front of the fire. Enough to get him on this show as it is, to be honest. But he's also the Tory MP for Finchley and Golders Green. It's Mike Freer MP. Hello, Mike. Hi there, Sam. Thanks for joining us. Um, you were born in Manchester. Yep. Your uncle was a miner. Yep. But you're a Tory. Come on, what's going on? Are you mad? Uh, I'm the blue sheep of the family. All right. uh, so all my family were Labour supporters. Mm. My father used to support Tony Benn, so we used to fight like cat and dog. Uh, but, yeah, I kind of got involved in politics. Got interested at school and got involved when I went to university, but um, I went over to the dark side of the Tories. Seriously, though, reading your bio, which is very, very interesting, uh, I mean, there's no more working-class credential more authentic than a tin bath in front of the fire. Yep. So, you know, that you've got that. That's in the bag. However, when I read about it and I read about, you know, you, you grew up in a council house, you know, you went to a grammar school, but the very sort of organs of the state that might have helped get you through a, a, the tough stage of your early life, now a lot of them you're voting against. Well, actually, I look at it from another way. I'm very comfortably off. Yeah, mm. I've done well. Mm. Um, I've had good jobs and I've earned plenty of money. And now I'm, you're pulling the ladder up. No, oh, I'm no, not. Sorry, I've <laughs> that's a good, it's good, a good attempt. <laughs> no, but that's why I've been supporting things like on education, good schools, lower tax, because that's what got me out of a poor background and allowed me to succeed. So, you know, I'm quite comfortable with uh, my consistency. You're chairman of the Tory party's LGBT advisory board, which is a tough gig when you consider the fact your equalities minister, Caroline Dynage, voted against same-sex marriage. Surely that makes a not fit for purpose. Well, it's... Uh... The, the thing is, people have uh, a range of views. It was a free vote. Mm. I disagree. I was an, a strong advocate of the Same-Sex Marriage Act. In fact, I got married myself nearly a year ago. So I was one of the... Congratulations. Uh, in fact, I think I was the first MP to actually use the legislation. Uh, but actually, the record under Cameron on LGBT rights is phenomenal. We have more gay MPs than the other parties put together. And it was David Cameron that pushed through same-sex marriage. If you look at the stuff we're doing on HIV, on HIV innovation, on HPV for men who have sex with men, the track record is very strong. Uh, you're famously pro-Israel. I find that it's quite trendy, or you could put it another way and say lazy, for people nowadays to kind of hedge their bets about issues like Israel and Palestine. Go, well, there are good arguments yep. on either side. It's a cop-out. You haven't copped out. How have you been able to sort of feel so much conviction about the issue of Israel and Palestine? Well, I think, it's not hedging, but I do support a Palestinian state, if I put that on record but I don't believe in a premature recognition. I certainly would do nothing that would encourage Hamas or Hezbollah. And my strong support of uh, Israel is partly, obviously, for my own, uh, if you like, Christian upbringing, not that I'm a practicing Christian, but it's the Holy Land. But more importantly, if you were to live in any country in the Middle East, which one would you choose? And if you're a woman or a gay man or a Christian or a Buddhist or an Arab, whatever, whatever religion, you choose Israel, mm. because that's where you have freedom of speech, you have freedom for it to practice your religion, equality, sexual equality, it doesn't matter, but in terms of whatever the equality agenda, Israel recognises those rights. So if I wanted to open a gay bar, or walk down a pride... In Bethlehem, then which sounds like a fantastic bar... <laughs> I would struggle to do it outside of Israel. Seriously, though, side note, I'm interested in investing if you do ever go down that road. I know that you're a successful entrepreneur <laughs> and I think that idea's got legs. If I open a gay bar in Bethlehem, you can come and open it. It would be fantastic. <laughs> That's a deal. Bethlehem Boys? Bethlehem Boys, a gay bar in Bethlehem uh, on the path Jesus once took. I've got a lot of gay friends. They all tell me that they're very adept with the old gaydar at spotting okay. and recognising <laughs> people they believe... I'm going to regret this, aren't ..they I? believe to be gay in okay. the public eye. Uh, how is your gaydar? Is that something rusty. that you Rusty. Is it rusty? OK, well, listen, we're going to put that to the test right here, right now. I've been now. with my partner 23 years, so it's, you know, it's out of date. So you, you, you don't use it... I mean, you know, you wouldn't use it in, a, in, a, you know, in order to identify potential partners. Well, I would say I'm it's married, Just for not your dead. own curiosity. Yeah. OK, just for your own good and all of our curiosity, we all want to know people in the public eye who may be secretly gay. And that's what we're going to find out now. Will I get sued if this? Um, we hope not. The lawyers are watching. <laughs> now, let's play this little game. It's time to play Who Do You Reckon Might Be Gay? With this week's special guest, Conservative MP Mike Freer. Tyson Fury, the mad boxer who says that gay marriage is a sign that Satan's on his way. Well, those who protest too much, maybe they've got a dark secret they want to share. 
but I'm not going to say yes because he's got a hell of a thump. Mm, yeah, OK, so we don't really know no, what you think no. because you're answering out of fear. Yeah. OK, let's look at our next contestant, uh, Isis. This is an Isis soldier. A lot of them, um, they're wearing the old glamouflage, of course, which uh, has had its... I don't know gay if it's still like fashionable. Uniforms. You probably don't go to gay discos anymore. Discos? you're a settled down married Showing your man. age now. Sorry, yeah, well... <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I call all night clubs, all night spots of any description, I call a disco. Okay. All these, all the brothers coming together in that kind of camouflage chic. Yeah, it makes you wonder, doesn't it? It's a yes. <laughs> Go on, we'll say yes. OK, yeah. that's a yes. They're coming for me anyway, so. Um, <laughs> and our last contestant on who do you reckon might be gay? Theresa May. Definitely not. Definitely not? Definitely How not. can you be so certain? Because I've met her husband. You met... Oh, so you're sitting here as a gay man telling me that there are no gay people who are married to members of the opposite sex. Didn't say that. Didn't you met her that. husband means yeah. nothing, I does met it? Her. I think she's lovely, but I don't think she's gay. Fair enough. Uh, Mike, thank you so much for playing our game, Who Do You Reckon Might Be Gay? Is there a prize? Uh, there is no prize, I'm afraid, other than the sense of pride you get at discovering that your gaydar might not have been quite so rusty as you worried. I thought I was going to get a date with Donald Think Trump. of this as us applying a bit of WD-40 <laughs> to your gaydar. Thank you very much. That's all we've got time for tonight. Thanks to Ian Lee, Henry Packer and Angela Barnes and, of course, Mike Freer. And so, with a cock of the hat and a wink of the eye, it's time to bid farewell to the dying embers of this week's ludicrous shithouse of a show and head off to Bethlehem to apply for planning permission on the best little gay bar this side of Baghdad. Let's dance. <laughs> <laughs>